it comes to punishing wrongdoers, history is full of some creative and downright disturbing methods. From ancient to modern times, the punishment of criminals has taken many forms. If you thought getting grounded or being sent to your room was a harsh punishment, think again. Here are the top 10 punishments in history you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Number 1. Brazen Bull the brazen bull is one of the most gruesome and cruel forms of torture in history. It was a large, hollow bronze bull designed in ancient Greece by Perios of Athens. The bull was used as a torture device to punish criminals and dissenters. The individual who was being punished would be positioned within the bull structure, and subsequently, a fire would be lit underneath it. As the bull heated up, the victim would slowly roast to death inside, emitting screams and cries that were amplified by the shape of the bull. The screams would be heard as music by the bystanders, who would watch the victim suffer in agony. According to the legend, the tyrant Phalaris was the first person to order the use of the brazen bull. Phalaris was known for his cruelty and savagery, and he wanted to create a torture device that would be the epitome of his sadism. When Perilos, the inventor of the brazen bull, presented his creation to Phalaris, the tyrant was impressed. However, he was not convinced that the device was as effective as Perilos claimed it to be. Phalaris ordered Perilos to climb inside the bull to test the device and demonstrate how it worked. Perilos was then roasted alive in his invention, as Phalaris watched and listened to his screams with great pleasure. The brazen bull gained popularity as a torture device and was widely utilized throughout history. It was used by the Romans, who called it Taurus, and it was also employed during the Spanish Inquisition in the 16th century. The device was used to extract confessions from criminals and heretics, and was often used as a public spectacle to intimidate the masses. The brazen bull was a popular form of execution during the Middle Ages and was often used to punish political dissidents and rebels. Pythagoras, the renowned philosopher and mathematician, was among the notable individuals who fell victim to the brazen bull. He was executed on the orders of the tyrant Phalaris. According to the legend, Pythagoras was so brilliant that he was able to calculate the exact frequency of the screams that the brazen bull would emit when someone was roasted alive inside it. The brazen bull was a symbol of the cruelty and barbarism that were prevalent in ancient times. It was a reminder of the savagery that humans are capable of when they are given absolute power over others. The device was eventually banned and outlawed, and its use was considered a crime against humanity. However, the legacy of the brazen bull lives on. Number 2. Scafism The boats, or scafism, was a form of ancient Persian torture used to discipline severe offenses. The punishment was so horrific that it's hard to imagine anyone surviving it. But what is scaphism, you ask? Well, let us tell you. The word scaphism originates from the Greek word skaphos, which means boat or skiff. The idea behind the punishment was simple. To trap a person between two boats or hollowed-out tree trunks and force-feed them milk and honey until they became bloated and unable to move. Then, the torturers would leave them out in the sun and let the insects and larvae feast on their flesh. The origins of scaphism are unclear, but it is said to have been used by the Persians as early as the 5th century BC. It was reportedly used as a punishment for a variety of crimes, including treason, murder, and theft. Yes, you heard that right. Insects and larvae. The milk and honey would attract all sorts of bugs, including wasps, ants, and flies. These creatures would lay their eggs in the victim's flesh, and the larvae would burrow inside and consume their internal organs. The victim would be in excruciating pain and would slowly die over a period of days. But wait, it gets even worse. The Persians believed that scaphism was a form of poetic justice, as the punishment should mirror the crime. For example, if someone committed a crime that involved eating or drinking, they would be subjected to scaphism with milk and honey. The Persians believed that scaphism was a humane punishment because it did not involve physical violence. Instead, it was a slow and gentle way to punish someone. Yes, you heard that right. Slow and gentle. Scaphism was a cruel and unusual punishment and a form of psychological warfare. The Persians would often use scaphism to intimidate their enemies and send a message about the severity of their punishments. Today, scaphism is considered one of history's most gruesome and barbaric forms of torture. 
It is a punishment that is both inhumane and absurd. It's hard to fathom how anyone could come up with such an awful idea, let alone convince themselves that it's a poetic way to punish someone. So the next time you're feeling down about your day, just be glad you're not stuck between two boats with bugs eating you. Number three, crushing by elephants. The punishment of being crushed by elephants, also known as Gunga Rao, was a form of execution that was practiced in ancient India and Southeast Asia. It was typically reserved for the most heinous crimes, such as treason or taking someone's life. The punishment involved tying the condemned person to the ground and then having a trained elephant step on them with its massive foot. The weight of the elephant, combined with the sharpness of its nails, would crush the victim's bones and organs, causing excruciating pain before eventually leading to death. The elephants were trained specifically for this purpose, and were often fed large quantities of alcohol beforehand to make them more aggressive and less likely to show mercy to their victims. The practice of crushing by elephants was considered highly effective at deterring others from committing similar crimes, as the public spectacle of the execution served as a warning to would-be offenders. It was also viewed as a form of divine justice, as the elephant was considered a sacred animal in many cultures and was believed to be an instrument of the gods. However, the punishment was also seen as barbaric by many, including some of the rulers who employed it. For example, the Mughal Emperor Akbar the Great banned the practice in the late 16th century, arguing that it was not befitting of a civilized society. Nevertheless, it continued to be used in some parts of India and Southeast Asia until the 19th century, and there are even reports of it being used as recently as the early 20th century. However, the punishment for being crushed by elephants was not without its risks. It was not uncommon for the elephant to accidentally take the life of its handler or other bystanders in the heat of the moment, and there are accounts of the condemned person being accidentally rescued by sympathetic onlookers who were able to distract the elephant or cut the ropes holding them down. Despite its gruesome nature, the punishment of being crushed by elephants has become the stuff of legend and has been immortalized in popular culture. It has been featured in numerous movies, such as Pirates of the Caribbean, where it is often portrayed as a ruthless punishment for the most heinous crimes. In modern times, the use of crushing elephants as a form of punishment has been universally condemned by human rights organizations and is illegal in every country in the world. Number 4. Blood Eagle The Blood Eagle torture is one of the most gruesome and horrifying methods of execution in history. It was a Viking ritual that was reserved for the worst of the worst, those who committed the most heinous crimes. It was said to be so painful that even the bravest of warriors would tremble at the mere mention of it. The Blood Eagle torture was performed by cutting the victim's back open and breaking their ribs to create wings. The torturer would then pull the lungs out of the body and lay them on the victim's back, creating the appearance of bloody wings. The victim would then slowly suffocate to death with their last breaths escaping through the open wounds. The mere thought of this torture is enough to make anyone cringe in horror. It's no wonder that it was only reserved for the most vile of criminals, as it was a punishment that was meant to be as painful and brutal as possible. Psychologically, the impact of the Blood Eagle was even more profound. It was intended to humiliate and dehumanize the victim and terrorize others who might oppose the ruling power. It served as a reminder that the punishment for rebellion or insubordination would be brutal and relentless. The use of the Blood Eagle was particularly effective in Viking culture, where honor and reputation were highly valued. The act of being subjected to the Blood Eagle was seen as the ultimate dishonor, and the fear of such a punishment may have been enough to keep many people in line. One can only imagine the kind of person who would be subjected to this type of torture. It was likely reserved for those who committed crimes such as murder and treason, crimes that were considered to be unforgivable and deserving of the most severe punishment. Number 5. Crucifixion Crucifixion is a brutal form of punishment that was used in ancient times to execute criminals, rebels, and enemies of the state. This method of execution involved binding the victim's limbs to a wooden cross and then hoisting them up so that they hung suspended in the air until they died. The purpose of this punishment was not only to punish the victim, but also to intimidate others who might be tempted to challenge the authority of the ruling power. The process of crucifixion was excruciatingly painful and slow. The victim's arms would be 
stretched out to their sides and nailed to the crossbeam. The nails were typically driven through the wrists, which caused immense pain and made it difficult for the victim to breathe. The feet were also nailed to the upright post of the cross, and the weight of the body would pull on the nails, causing even more pain. The position in which the victim was suspended made it extremely difficult to breathe, and they would slowly suffocate over a period of several hours or even days. The victim would struggle to lift themselves to take a breath, but the weight of their body and the pain in their limbs would prevent them from doing so. As a result, they would gradually become more and more exhausted until they could no longer lift themselves at all. The physical pain of crucifixion was only part of the punishment. The victims were also subjected to public humiliation and ridicule. They would be stripped naked and displayed in a public place where they could be seen by everyone. This was done to shame the victim and send a message to others that the ruling power had complete control over their lives and their bodies. The Romans, who were known for their use of crucifixion, would often leave the bodies of the victims hanging on the crosses for days after they had died. This was done to humiliate the victim further and deter others from committing similar crimes. The bodies would be left to rot in the sun, and birds and animals would feed on the flesh. In addition to the pain of crucifixion, there were also religious connotations to the punishment. The Romans used crucifixion to suppress religious and political movements that threatened their authority. Number 6. Racking Racking, also known as stretching the body, was a gruesome form of punishment that was commonly used in medieval Europe. The purpose of this punishment was to inflict immense pain on the victim by pulling their limbs and joints out of their sockets. It was believed that this would force the victim to confess to their crimes or reveal information that they might be withholding. The process of racking involved placing the victim on a wooden rack and then using ropes or chains to stretch their body. The victim's arms and legs would be tied to the rack, and then the rack would be slowly cranked by a torturer. As the rack was cranked, the victim's limbs would be pulled in opposite directions, causing them to stretch and eventually dislocate from their sockets. The pain inflicted by racking was excruciating, and victims often begged for mercy or pleaded for the torture to stop. The torturers would continue to crank the rack until the victim confessed or provided the desired information. In some cases, the victim's limbs would be intentionally broken or dislocated to increase the level of pain and suffering. Racking was not only a painful form of punishment, but it also had long-term effects on the victim's physical health. Victims who survived the torture were often left with permanent injuries and disabilities, such as nerve damage, muscle atrophy, and chronic pain. In some cases, victims were left paralyzed or unable to walk. Racking was often used as a form of punishment for crimes such as treason, sedition, and heresy. It was also used to extract secrets from individuals who were accused of crimes but had not yet been convicted. In some cases, innocent people were subjected to racking in an attempt to force them to confess to crimes that they did not commit. The use of racking as a form of punishment began to decline in the 18th century as the Enlightenment brought about new ideas about human rights and dignity. Today, racking is no longer used as a form of punishment, and it is considered a barbaric and inhumane practice. Number 7. Molten Gold Molten Gold Punishment, also known as Pouring of Molten Gold or Golden Shower, was a cruel and unusual punishment that was inflicted on individuals in ancient times. This barbaric practice involved pouring molten gold onto the person, which resulted in death due to severe burns and shock. The practice of pouring molten gold as a form of punishment is believed to have originated in ancient Persia. According to historical records, this punishment was reserved for individuals who had committed crimes against the state or the ruling monarch. The punishment was also used as a means of deterring others from committing similar offenses. The method of execution involved heating gold to its melting point and then pouring it onto the individual's body, usually starting at the feet and gradually working upwards. The victim's screams could be heard from miles away as the molten metal burned through their flesh, muscles, and bones. The heat generated by the molten gold was so intense that it caused severe shock and internal damage to the victim's vital organs, leading to his death within minutes. The pouring of molten gold was not only used as a form of punishment, but also as a means of torture and intimidation. 
It was believed that the sight of a person being slowly covered in molten gold would strike fear into the hearts of potential rebels and dissidents. While the practice of pouring molten gold as a form of punishment is no longer in use, its legacy remains a testament to the barbarism of past times. It is a stark reminder of the importance of upholding human rights and dignity and the need to avoid the use of torture and inhumane punishment. In popular culture, the molten gold punishment has been shown in various movies and TV shows. One of the most famous examples is the scene from the TV series Game of Thrones, where a character named Viserys Targaryen was punished by having molten gold poured onto his head. This scene highlights the brutal nature of the punishment and the psychological impact it has on the victim and those who witness it. Pouring molten gold as punishment was a cruel and dehumanizing practice that has been thankfully abandoned in modern times. Number 8. Flaying Flaying, also known as skinning, is a form of punishment that involves the removal of a person's skin. The practice of flaying dates back to ancient times and has been used in various cultures and societies as a means of punishment and torture. Although it is considered an extreme and barbaric form of punishment, flaying has been used throughout history for a variety of reasons, including as a deterrent for criminal behavior, a means of extracting confessions, and as a form of revenge. The act of flaying involves the removal of a person's skin using various tools such as knives, hooks, or other sharp objects. The skin is then either left to dry or used as a display to instill fear in others. In some cases, the flayed skin was used to make clothing, bags, or other objects. One of the most famous cases of flaying was that of the Aztec ruler, Montezuma. When Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés arrived in Mexico in 1519, he captured Montezuma and his advisors. After an uprising, the Spanish were forced to retreat, and Montezuma was killed. According to some accounts, the Aztecs flayed Montezuma's body and hung his skin on a wall to display their victory over the Spanish. In medieval Europe, flaying was often used as a punishment for treason or other serious crimes. The practice was particularly prevalent in France. One of the most famous cases of flaying in France was that of Robert Francois Damien, who attempted to assassinate King Louis XV in 1757. Damien was flayed alive, and his body was then burned. Flying was also used as a means of extracting confessions from prisoners. The belief was that the pain of flaying would cause the prisoner to confess to their crimes. This was a common practice during the Spanish Inquisition, where suspected heretics were often subjected to torture and flaying. The punishment is considered a barbaric and inhumane form of punishment, and it is illegal in most countries. However, some cases of flaying are reported in countries where human rights are not respected. Number 9. Nose Cutting One of the most brutal and humiliating punishments in ancient Egypt was the act of cutting off a person's nose. The nose was considered an important feature on the face, symbolizing one's identity and beauty. In Egyptian culture, a person's appearance was highly valued, and cutting off someone's nose was a way to strip them of their dignity and social status. The practice of nose-cutting was not reserved for any particular social class, as it was a punishment that could be inflicted upon anyone, regardless of status or wealth. It was often used to punish those who committed crimes such as adultery or theft or even as a form of public humiliation for those considered enemies of the state. The act of cutting the nose was performed by trained executioners who would use a sharp instrument such as a knife or razor to remove the nose in one swift motion. This would not only cause immense pain, but also leave the victim disfigured for life. In addition to the physical pain, the psychological impact of having one's nose cut off was also significant. The loss of one's nose was not only a disfiguring and painful experience, but also a traumatic event that often led to feelings of shame, embarrassment, and isolation from society. The victim was often shunned and ridiculed, and their social status was irreparably damaged. Moreover, the punishment for nose-cutting was not limited to the victim alone. It also had a significant impact on their family and loved ones. The family members of the victim were also subjected to ridicule and ostracization, which often led to economic hardships and social exclusion. The practice of nose-cutting was eventually abolished as the Egyptian civilization evolved, but its impact on the culture and history of the region is still felt to this day. 
It is a reminder of the inhumanity of punishment systems that were once used to maintain social order and power. Number 10. Dunking Stool The dunking stool, also known as the cucking stool, was a punishment commonly used in medieval Europe and colonial America. It was used primarily to punish women who were accused of gossiping, slandering, or other forms of moral misconduct. The punishment involved placing the accused woman in a chair that was attached to a long pole and dunking her repeatedly into water. The dunking stool was a form of public shaming and humiliation. The accused woman would be paraded through the town or village before being placed on the dunking stool. She would then be lowered into the water, often repeatedly, until she was nearly drowned or had confessed to her wrongdoing. The punishment was believed to be an effective means of controlling women's behavior as it targeted gossip and other forms of moral misconduct that were deemed to be particularly prevalent among women. It was also believed to be a means of purifying the accused, as the water was known as a symbol of cleansing and renewal. Despite its prevalence, the dunking stool was a controversial punishment. Many people spoke out against it. Critics argued that it was cruel and degrading and violated basic human rights. They also argued that the punishment was often used to target women who were expressing their opinions or engaging in harmless gossip. Over time, the use of the dunking stool declined, and it was eventually abolished in many countries. Today, it is seen as a relic of a more barbaric time, and it is not used as a punishment in any modern legal system. The dunking stool is an example of how punishment evolved. In medieval Europe, Punishment was often cruel and arbitrary, and punishments such as the dunking stool were seen as a necessary means of maintaining order and control in society. However, as societies became more enlightened and developed a greater respect for human rights, punishments became less harsh and more focused on rehabilitation and reform. Today, most legal systems prioritize rehabilitation over punishment, and punishments such as imprisonment and fines are seen as more effective means of addressing criminal behavior. While some forms of punishment are controversial, most modern legal punishments are based on the principles of justice, fairness, and respect for human dignity.